I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today, we're here in Managua. I can't really talk. I slept a little bit funny, and I've got something in my throat. It's causing me to choke if I speak at my normal volume. Feeling okay. It's just I have this throat thing sometimes when I sleep funny, and it'll go away by the end of the day. But I'm here in Managua. We're here for my daughter's birthday. It's not actually her birthday. That was last week. But we came up. And we like to stay at the Double Tree, which you can see behind me back there on the south side of Managua. This is a beautiful area up in the hills. A lot of people have asked about Santa Domingo, and that's right over there. We're not that far away. We're uh, maybe a five minute drive from the Galleria's. This is a great area. I love the hills above Managua. I'm gonna be taking you guys out to see some of the stuff we do today. This is just like a day out in Managua sort of video because we're here hanging out, mostly doing restaurants, a little bit of shopping. My kids like to go out to Managua. So I'm just bringing you guys along as best as I can for our day here. So let's get to our day after the bump. From the Doubletree, I have walked 1.5 miles continuously uphill. You can see it's beautiful and stuff, but it goes farther uphill and I have my limits. I need to get back a mile and a half is not bad, but uphill, I'm sweating heavily. My heart rate is up. I need to get back, shower, and get ready to take the kids and my wife, Dominica, to breakfast. We're planning on going to the Barrio Cafe, one of my favorite spots in the city to eat. Used to be in San Juan del Sur, but now it's here in Managua. The town that we're in here is the Via Fontana Sur, which Via Fontana is where we started. So we only went one neighborhood away. And Via in Spanish is the word villa from Italian. So it does not mean the way, it means the house or the small neighborhood. Uh, and so sometimes colonias, we've talked about that, are called vias. And here, where we're starting, so it's very identifiable on a map. We're gonna take a moment and bring up a map so you can see it. But this is the Colegio Caminos. That is the high school of the ways. Camino means way, not via in Spanish. So Camino is via from Italian. They had to switch to a different word. Uh, Camino comes from walking. So it's, it's more like the walk. But in English, you know, there's a lot of times, especially religiously, you could use the walk and the way simultaneously or, or interchangeably, I mean. And so in Italian, when they're talking about a pathway, they use the term via or way. And in Spanish, they use camino or walk, uh, but be it's simply because the pronunciation of villa is via exactly the same as the way in Italian is the kind of country house in Spanish. So this Villa Fontana, sir, is extremely high. You're going to notice that every inch of the way that we walk is going to be downhill the entire way. I did all this uphill, so I am exhausted. <laughs> but these houses up here are gorgeous. This is one of the nicer areas of the city. It's one of the spots that we never talk about. And uh, partially because it's relatively inaccessible. It's not actually physically hard to get here or anything. It's just it's in an area that the roads are not going to leave you here, lead you here. The road that we're on at the moment is known as Avenida Primera de los Robles. For those who know my show or just know the city, Los Robles is a highly desirable portion of the city that is full of bars, restaurants, nightclubs, hotels. It's where we often stay when we're in the city. But now that we've discovered the double tree, we stay just up the hill from Los Robles in the Via Fontana. Not Sur, the regular Via Fontana. Just gonna note this open kind of plantain area. I have no idea what this is for, just open area on the left. And a lot of gated, privately guarded communities on little side roads everywhere. There is land available, Terreno and Venta, that is 3,600 square yards. Varus are yards. Yes, they actually use those once in a while. I hate when they use them. We should be using meters, feet, manzanas, acres. We have enough measurements as it is. We already have more than other countries. We don't need Varus as well as a holdover from the Spanish colonial period, as are the manzanas, which linguistically simply means the size of an apple orchard and mathematically means 1.7 acres. Pretty much everything up here is walled. 
So unfortunately, there's a lot of absolutely stunning homes. If any of the people who live in these homes are watching the show, we would love to feature your homes on the show. We'd love to get a tour, talk about life up here. We can do interviews in Spanish if you like. This is Ulim on the left. Another gated place on the right. I am drenched in sweat, which is unfortunate. So this is the Via Monte Oreb. For regular viewers of my show, you'll know that we uh, there is a, uh, a colonia or a barrio, I can't remember exactly what its designation is, in southern Sutiava in western Leon, that is Monte Oreb, and we did an episode on that. Some of these names you'll see recur around the country. A little access alley between things. This is the Via San Gattardo. Here's what one of the side roads looks like. Everything's very spaced out up here, partially because it's very mountainous. So if you're gonna build up here, you have to deal with a lot of terrain issues. Uh, but also if you're gonna build up here, you don't need to be in easy walking distance of downtown or anything. So these tend to be estates, very, very nice estates. Beautiful fenced in forest area here on the left. I have no idea if this is just protected forest land that does happen throughout the city or if it's uh, can be a compound of some some type. Some places, some embassies, for example, will surround themselves with forest so that you can't tell that they're there and it uh, keeps them quite secret. Or just people who want to have a house and be absolutely secret as well. Now in front of us, a little ways away, it's going to take us a minute to get there. But down the hill is the Plaza San Sebastian. There's actually a full plaza with all kinds of little shops up here in this area. Now, when you're looking at the map, I uh, just want to show Residencial Miralagos, the Miracle Residency. You can see they go up a little bit. There's actually a little bit. Most of the roads go down. That one goes up just a little bit. And someone asked how you say or what is Bougainvillea. This is a place known as Bougainvillea. That is how you spell it in Spanish. In English, we use the French spelling, but not the pronunciation. <laughs> but that is the, when you're looking at the videos, in my garden, I have these beautiful pink flowers, or kind of sometimes purple, that are going on all over the place. That is the Bougainvillea. But those aren't Bougainvillea trees. Those are hikaro trees. The Bougainvillea is a vine that is attached to it, and they live kind of symbiotically. Or maybe it's a parasite. It's hard to say, but they're together anyway. I'm going to get off the road. There's actually a little bit of a path here. Very small, but there's something. Gets us a little bit more of a vantage point and lets me not walk in the way of traffic because it's a little bit narrow up here. The sidewalk ends really close to the double tree. So as long as there's good light, like early in the morning, like right now, this is perfectly safe to walk up here. But at night, I would say you want to be a little bit cautious just because cars won't be able to see you very easily. Extremely safe neighborhood, of course. You can see how beautiful this house is over here on the right. You only get a little glimpse, but you can tell these are just outrageously beautiful places hidden behind these walls and gates. And often quite old. This is Zona 1 here in Managua. So my understanding is this is some of the oldest housing in the city. This is where people came. Because it's high in the hill, the weather is much cooler. Hopefully on the video, you can get a sense for just how much that road drops off. Like that's so steep, if I fell, I would roll down the hill. The same with this road on the right. You can see this truck is struggling to come up. Some of these roads are outrageously steep. And that can make living in some of these a little bit difficult. If you had to take a car up and down that every day, you'd probably be sorry, but there's probably some amazing houses down there as well. And yes, there is a sign. I believe this one says for rent. I didn't see it. Yes. Oh, for rent or sale. Now here is the Plaza San Sebastian. It's a small plaza, but still very surprising to have a plaza like this up in the hills. This is something that would never happen in the United States. The U.S. is so centralized with like shopping and restaurants and all that tend to be close to each other. And here in Nicaragua, you're very likely to have these things spread out so that there's a, there'll be a small plaza mixed into any given remote community. So this is the only plaza I know of 
in Via Fontana Sur. But that is a beautiful fancy little pizzeria and bistro down there. Hopefully you guys can see it. The beautiful tables are not open yet, it's early. I'm doing this about nine o'clock in the morning. But that is a really nice looking restaurant. This is a very fancy neighborhood. Now this is a two story. Through this you got what looks like a dental place. There's a neuroscience place. I'm gonna show over here too. This place is a beauty salon. Very fancy. I'm sure that is not the only source of their income. There is some business I don't know that is not on the main sign, Tifer and Associates. Oh, those are lawyers. That's a law office. And then this one on the corner, it's behind the sign. We're gonna see it in a minute. This is Los Olivos, the Olives Coffee Shop and Market. If I wasn't so sweaty, I would stop in, but I'm a little bit ridiculous, but I really want to check it out. <laughs> They're not very busy. There's very few cars here. I'm very tempted, but I really am sweaty, like it's obnoxious. But what a cute spot. It looks so nice. So nice. It's a Friday morning that I'm recording this, by the way, just in case anyone is wondering what kind of traffic you're seeing. And I'm going to check the actual time. 9.31. So you're seeing Friday morning, 9.31 traffic in Villa Fontana, sir. Via Fontana, sir. I'm really glad I did this walk this morning. I mean, some outrageously good exercise. I, I wish you guys could see the elevation change that I'm doing. Now it's easy because I'm going downhill, but going uphill... Holy cow, for a mile and a half. So this is a three mile walk you're seeing the second half of. Hopefully we get a nice good recording on this. This is all beautiful stuff and completely different than anything we've ever shown before. This is all unique and new. I love getting out to do Managua because it's so dynamic as a city. And I know what we normally show, what you guys picture as Managua is not this. Okay, so uh, you can't really tell from here. So first of all, this place on Directly in front of us is Oasis, or Oasis in English, and they seem to have, I believe, rental places. But if we look forward, right in front of us there, that is the Argentinian embassy down that little side street. So, kind of gives you an idea of what kind of places come up here. Major country embassies hidden the hills. Nice place to be. I'm sure the embassy staff like to get their coffee from the little coffee place. You can kind of tell that anything that's built over there on the right has beautiful views. It's, okay, it's a little bit hard to tell from here, but there's a big valley over there leading to Santa Domingo. A lot of people ask me about Santa Domingo neighborhoods, and I do want to walk around and show those just like I'm doing this. I just wasn't there to do it, but we are one ridge over. So this is, you can see that is a beautiful house kind of hidden back there. Hopefully that shows up. And then this is Calle La Luna, Street of the Moon, smaller, much more reasonable houses down there, but still nice. Tell very nice neighborhood, all of this. And these are smaller houses in a development over here on the left. This is a completely gated. So this is about the only view you're going to get of it is from over here at this field. And there is a cute pit bull barking at me. You can't see him yet, but when I come around, he will show up at the gate. He's down below those trees right there. So we're one ridge over from Santa Domingo. This is, oh, there he is. He came up. What a cutie. What a cutie. This gives you a little bit of the feel of what Santa Domingo would be like. Santa Domingo is a much larger, more popular, more well-known upscale neighborhood of this type. Uh, so this one, much more hidden. Santa Domingo is along the Messiah Road, which has all the famous shopping and Costco, well, the Price Mart, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this says, beautiful house for sale, exclusive residencia, or gated community, here on the left. And so the, the so I said this town is the Via Fontana Sur. These are the villas of Fontana Sur. Little play on the name of the town, mixing it in with Italian, just to be confusing. And then this is an open lot that is actually available. Now, this, I imagine, is a very expensive lot. This is an extremely exclusive neighborhood with very few open lots. So, this is one of those times where if someone said, boy, they're asking a lot more than I was expecting in Nicaragua, 
almost certainly, yeah, this is going to be one of those ones where they reasonably can ask way more than you would normally ask in Nicaragua. These are seriously exclusive lots. And for some reason, lots of trees as well. I'm not sure why there isn't more development up here. Maybe it's protected to keep it nice for the people who've already built. It could be really old land. Now, just going to show this. We have a colegio. So this is a high school for doctors. Or its name is that, and it's actually a university. It's really hard to tell, but it's just a, a really small medical campus in there. I know nothing about it. Modern house here on the left. Again, there's no way to see it, but you can tell it has to be really nice. All right, looks like we got a construction company offices here on the left. But there's also, this is Betula or Vetula. This is a shop, but a really beautiful house. I don't know what those guys were yelling at me about, but something. They sell tortillas, sour cream, naka tamales. It's a little bit wide open over there. I feel like traffic is picking up. You'll notice, you don't see these in my Leon videos, but the little tuk-tuks, while not super popular in Managua, are, are around. Another side street there. Tell lots of houses going down in those directions. Another beautiful walled compound here on the left. And uh, so the, it seems like this house up here has this big open yard over here. I'm not sure who the open yard is associated with, but there's a beautiful open space with nice views. Instead of a sidewalk here, they went for pavers and kind of a drainage ditch ensemble. It works. All right, I'm gonna pop over because I wanna show this ridiculous road on the right as soon as this traffic comes by. Ooh, it's warm. It wasn't too bad when I started out, but going uphill for a mile and a half and then the sun coming out and warming up. Yeah, it warms up. Okay, so this is only for residents. This is a private road. And again, I don't know if you can see at all how much this dips down. That is going so steep down the hill and down around the corner, it is crazy. I would hate to have to drive a road like that. If your car has any problems, oh my gosh. I'm gonna do my best to show the side of it. I, do, I don't know if there's any way to convey how steep that is. And these beautiful orange flowers with all kinds of butterflies and stuff in them. Oh, we're good to walk around. Oh, and I'm safe to cross over. All right. One of these. A little bit less exciting of a spot over here. Still. Good location. You will also notice that the cars coming up and down this hill have a tendency to be decently nice or taxis. One thing that you will get used to in Nicaragua is that, that is a student driver right there, Prince, Prince Piante. Uh, 
What is a fancy car is very different than in, say, the United States because there is so much traffic. There is so much... Okay, just before I go on about cars, on the left here, this long wall, well-maintained, heavily secured. This is the Embassy of China. This entire complex along here. I can only imagine that this is staggeringly huge. Embajada de la República Popular de China and the República de Nicaragua. And then over here, there are lots for sale and a very worn out sign in this gated community that we know nothing about, but it's gated and has lots and it's across the street from the Chinese embassy. Probably going to be a pretty good location, definitely an incredibly safe one. If you're ever wondering where to have a safe place to live across the street from the Chinese embassy is right at the top of the list. <laughs> This is a small church here on the on the right, the Iglesia Nueva Jerusalem, which is the obviously the Church of New Jerusalem. Another private house here on the right. You kind of see the roof. Sad for these walks that we can't really see the houses. They, it would be so cool to tour all of these and see what fancy Nicaraguan living looks like up close and personal. These are some serious agave that I'm walking by. <laughs> agave are a very popular security measure here in Nicaragua because they look attractive from a distance but up close they hurt <laughs> and uh, they're like a casual barbed wire if you really want to break into a place of course they're not going to stop you beautiful house down here I mean stunning stunning and you can actually see it over here on the right is a little empanadas place but it's specifically Chilean empanadas, and it's just built into this wall of something else. Sabor Chileno. I believe they're closed right now. It's still pretty early. It's more of a dinner place, but really cool that there are specifically Chilean empanadas. I'm just on the street in this neighborhood. So eclectic. Uh, hopefully you can see a bit. We got a great house over here. And some nice stuff over here as well. But definitely on the left is a little bit more interesting. I do love the style of the nicer houses up here. I mean, nice houses anywhere have nice style, right? Like that's, that's to be expected, but high-end Central American kind of country style has this sort of Italian, sort of Spanish inspired look with the terracotta colors. You'll notice as well that, especially compared to what you see in Leon, Notice the trees on this entire walk. Back up and watch it again if you need to. But you have completely different trees than you're normally seeing on my walks in hotter western Nicaragua. Hey, we're going to show this as well. I can't quite read the, the beautiful metal sign that they have. Multiple buildings in there. I can only imagine this is like a restaurant or something. But it looks like a house. It's hard to say. I don't know. There's a name on it and a separate building that kind of makes it look like something. But the, the trees here... Like here on the right, notice, we're definitely up in the mountains. The air is quite a bit cooler. So we have different trees. You'll see some pine trees along here as well. Not a lot. And you still see some plantain, plantains like here on the left. But the trees in general are just a little bit different. And we are noticeably at higher elevation and in a cooler city in general. Managua is noticeably cooler than Leon downtown. And then Leon doesn't have hills like this. So yes, I'm hot and sweaty, but this is a very hot day. 
in general. And I'm walking uphill. What is this? And, oh, we got a little path going into the woods. No idea where that goes. And a tuk-tuk. Wow. But with the elevation up here, if you were to drive to your house instead of walking up the hill to it, you would find that this is much cooler, much, much cooler than even Managua, which is much cooler than even Leon. And up here, the higher elevation, of course, lowers the temperature, but the, it, the elevation also gives you a lot of continuous breezes. Beautiful house over here on the right that you can't really see at all in a nice big compound. I love kind of the, the way that they've sculpted that as well. And we're coming up in front of us, you'll see it. We're gonna go right past it, so I'm a little bit preemptive, but this is the Amazonia. So check a map and look for the Amazonia Resto Bar. It's a really well-known fancy restaurant here in Managua. I've never actually eaten there, but it looks fantastic. I know people have been there. Everyone says it's good. Their Instagram looks really good. I definitely plan to make it at some point. I just need to get out and get there. So close to the double tree, but we don't spend enough time in Managua to explore more restaurants. That's, that's a challenge. I do a little bit more, but I used to be here more than I am now. I, I need to really come down quite a bit more than I do. And, uh, but my kids only come a couple times a year and they have a list of restaurants that they really like. The Barrio Cafe, the Cafe Molino, Pane y Vino, uh, Cajun, uh, Sushi Ito, where we ate last night if you're watching any of my, my feed, my food feed, I guess. And, uh, so they're always itching to go back to those places whenever we're here, which is great that they have a list of places they like so much that they always want to go. But it means that we're always going to those with them because they can't get to them often enough to not want to go back to them. Now we are here a little longer on this particular trip. I get a little bit of a close up shot. It's a restaurant, they don't care. Definitely a house that was converted to be a restaurant. That would have been a beautiful house once upon a time. Give you a shot of where we are. Just walked that. See a little bit of the views across the way here. You can see unbelievably beautiful houses across the valley. You probably can't see it on the video because it's really far away, but maybe, maybe we're lucky and you can see it. I need to come out here with the good camera and really, really get some of these shots. There is a reason, I know that people don't believe me, but there are reasons why people choose to live in Managua. And you can see beautiful houses down there, oh my gosh. And you can see that there's another ridge, of course, with equally beautiful houses over there. So there's all these ridges with these beautiful places. There's a lot of really cool, somewhat isolated neighborhoods in Managua. And that makes it hard to show, hard to define, but absolutely amazing. Now this is a gallery, the Efren Medina Gallery. I knew this was in Managua, but I had no idea where it was. So I'm really excited that we came upon this. I absolutely love this artist. I've been wanting to go to this gallery. I'm not gonna go now, I'm all sweaty and I think it's closed. But this is where it's located, very easy to find. And then over here, yep, there's a bunch of trash, but insanely good views. One and a half manzanas are for sale over here. Now it's very steep. So I'm sure there's reasons why people have not built there already, because this is, uh, by the way, there, there are chips here, Tula chips. You can order them on Ugo, but Ugo doesn't exist, so that sign is useless. So on the right, yeah, it's for sale, but it also drops off like a cliff. So I don't know what it would take to do anything useful with it. Over here on the left, you can tell that everything is solidly developed because it's not a cliff and it's a super desirable area. And these are beautiful, different style, but you can see the parking is along the road. And then we have a business here. You know, see, it's not really a business, it's a government agency. The Comisión Nacional Ganadera de Nicaragua. And still cliff and nothing on the right. We're just above the double tree. We're gonna be there in very little time. 
There's actually a casino with the double tree, which is weird. <laughs> a lot of casinos in Nicaragua. Most of them are not too nice, but there are nice ones here and there. I'm sure the one with the double tree is pretty nice. We have a really nice one in Leon. We're really hoping, I'm working on this. Paul is probably the most regular person at the casino, at the good casino in Leon. And uh, we're hoping that at some point, maybe we can get them to like stay open after they've closed or open a little bit early in the morning so we can go in when no one's gambling and film the place and do a little tour and show people like where to park, where to go, what it's like, what the hotel and restaurant connected to it are like. Those we can show, obviously. That's La Perla and Bistro 1852. They're supposed to be fantastic. Uh, but the casino itself, a lot of people do have questions about casinos. And of course there's little tiny uh, gambling dens, as we would call them. They call them gamerias here. And uh, often they're like Atlantic City or 777. And I'm going to pop over and get a little bit of a view for you. This is right above the double tree. That is the double tree we can see right there and the sign for the casino. Notice there's actually a pass through with a path here. This is set up for you to walk through and then fall directly down that cliff. I have no idea what you're supposed to do. So at some point here, we crossed from, so at some point before the Amazonia, we crossed from Villa Fontana Sur into Villa Fontana proper. This is Villa Fontana, Via, Via Fontana. I will always say it in English, there's no way for me not to. And this is where we like to stay when we're here in Managua. This is just a little bit, there's a lot of nice places really close to here. Of course, you can, this is the Avenida that goes right into Los Robles. Another really nice house right here on the left. Not quite as fancy as a lot of the ones we've seen, but what a location and beautiful spot. And classic setup. Remember, a lot of these houses are quite old, so sometimes you're just seeing things that are old, but, but classic, so they, they remain, and very high, right? We'd have to climb up to really get an idea of what's up there. And here we're overlooking the double tree. Hopefully you can really see here just how beautiful the neighborhoods are beyond it. I'm gonna put the camera up high so you can get a better view. And of course, right there, the camera cuts out, but I wanna show you more of our day. I wasn't just doing the walk through the countryside. This is the lobby of the Doubletree Managua, and I'm using the uh, Insta360 Go 3 chest mounted here, and I hadn't figured out how to do horizon leveling, so I apologize for the slight change in pitch now and then, but I think we do get some pretty good images. You can see the parking lot, you can see the casino there beyond, and a little bit of how high the road is as it comes by the double tree there on the right. That's where I walked up that hill uh, yesterday or earlier in the show. I guess it wasn't yesterday. It was uh, just moments ago for you guys. And I was standing right up that top corner when the camera died. So walking out to the parking lot, we're going to take you to do some shopping. Now, if you saw my episode from the other day in Ciudad Sandino, I was not able to film as much of the plaza as I'd hoped, hoped to do so. Or um, two years ago, I tried to do Paseo Real in Leon. I wanted to show what the mall was like in Leon. And I wasn't able to film it because they don't allow you filming in a lot of places. So I'm trying to see how discreet I can be using the Go 3 and I'm wearing this. So this is just on my chest. It's a tiny little camera. It doesn't give us the absolute best image, but it does pretty good, especially when the light is good. And this is the Galerias, the Galerias of Santo Domingo on the southeast side of the city off of the Carretera Messiah. So we're walking in from where I like to park at the food entrance. This is where all the restaurants, not the food court, the actual like restaurant, restaurants are. You can see the Hard Rock Cafe we just went past. We're going past like the wing places and the sushi places. There's a Papa John's, a lot of American places, a lot of big chains, uh, both Nicaraguan and regional and American. And uh, this is the fancier of the big malls here in Managua. Uh, Miniso is a very popular chain. We've been going to there for years here in Nicaragua and it's starting to show up in the US and other places. Uh, that there's a, there's a number of these uh, Asian chains from different countries that are that sell a lot of different products from their countries um, and are really good prices and really important spots to shop at. Really high quality stuff in a lot of cases uh, that we recommend. This is a really nice mall, but it is worth noting this is outdoors. Even the indoor portions are essentially outdoors. There are fountains and stuff. It's a very pretty mall. Uh, so it has a lot of restaurants, a lot of coffee shops, a lot of places to hang out. Good shopping, a number of different stores of all types. It would remind you of a 
a mall in an American city for the most part, but it is all outside. So when you're inside, it is not air conditioned. Individual stores are often air conditioned, but the mall itself is not. That would make it super expensive and probably cause it to be really packed full all the time as people would just linger about in the mall to enjoy free air conditioning. That's a tough thing here because it's so costly and so rare. You can't just go uh, anywhere and get air conditioning the way you can in, say, the United States. So they tend to do um, very wide open, but it gets good airflow. It's quite comfortable most of the time. Uh, so it's not the kind of place that we think of as being hot. Uh, it is quite nice. That's the Casa del Cafe, one of the many coffee shops there within uh, the mall. And, of course, you can go inside and it's air conditioned, or you can be outside and it's just open air. I have no idea why they have a frog statue, but it is super cute. All right, just more of walking through the mall itself. Now we're under the well-enclosed portion of it, but again, all of the entrances are wide open, so there's air just moving right through here. This is not all sealed off. You can see a lot of the stores. That's why I wanted to show you guys what the shopping is like in the nicer malls. Of course, the average Nicaraguan comes to these kinds of malls very rarely. This is quite expensive for most Nicaraguans. Uh, and I want to point out there's a Radio Shack, right? Radio Shack is a major chain here. It's never gone away. They're in all the cities. We have several here in Leon uh, and uh, people shop at them all the time. They're part of the La Curacao uh, family of uh, shops. Zara from Spain, also quite big here, both under Zara, which you see right there, Zara's own brand, as well as they have sub brands that people don't necessarily uh, know are part of Zara. And we're gonna come up on one of them here on the right, Pullen Bear. No idea why it's called that. The name is so weird. Obviously Boss is coming first, but just after it is Pullen Bear. And that's a secondary Zara brand. So it's a, a large fashion chain out of Spain. And Kalala right there, if you see that name, that is used, you see that constantly in things in Nicaragua. That is the Nicaraguan and only Nicaraguan term for passion fruit. That is not used anywhere else that I know of in the world. Uh, so it's something you have to get used to, but because it's such a Nicaraguan word, people use it on everything. So you'll see it said very commonly, um, but because it's a unique word to the region, um, a lot of people are just confused as to what it might be. Riding the escalator up, gonna get some more views of the shopping center for you. This is, uh, when we come into Managua, my kids really like going shopping. Uh, there's so many restaurants and cafes. A lot of the time we're just heading out to get coffee or to get dinner. Uh, so we actually did dinner the night before this here in the Galerias. Uh, and this is very close to where we are at the Double Tree. So no no big distance at all. It's maybe a five to 10 minute drive in, in heavy traffic. Um, and, and I will walk this in a future episode. I'm actually gonna walk from the Double Tree to the Galerias. So you can see the entire path in between. Um, I don't know if that's gonna come up tomorrow or in a few days, but I do manage to capture that. Uh, and I think that'll be interesting for those who wanna see just how close things are together. But this is part of the Santa Domingo area. We're staying in Villa Fontaine, via Fontaine, like I said uh, before, uh, but they, they are neighboring neighborhoods uh, and both are very upscale and both kind of hilly uh, and have similar developments, similar shopping, similar restaurants and that kind of stuff that kind of blend together to some degree. And neighborhoods in Managua tend to be quite small. There we get a good, good overall view of one of the main stretches of the mall here. We're going to head back to the main food area, much where we came in, uh, simply because we're, we're heading to a cafe uh, as I walk and record this. And you can see lots and lots of American stores and brands are available or, or similar ones that you would see in the United States. That's Skechers right there. It's easy to go buy many things. Now, now like if you're going to buy shoes or something here in Nicaragua, if you're buying American brands, you are going to pay a premium. Garmin store there on the left. Um, you will pay a little bit more, right? They're being imported from the U.S. There is an import tax, so you're going to find that the prices are a little bit higher. But if you're comparing that to shipping something in specially, you're probably going to do much better buying in country. But if there's something you need specially, uh, ordering in is a good way to go as well. Or if you're like us, every time we pass through the U.S., I'm sure to pick up a pair of shoes or whatever I need. I make sure that I'm getting my clothing, especially as it is difficult for me to find sizes. My shoe size is impossible to get. I mean, we have been and all over the country asked all kinds of places uh, and they all say including custom cobblers uh, say that there's no way to get my size shoe in country my foot is simply too large 
Now we're, we're kind of uh, open air here again. And in front of us, you can see the cinema. Uh, a lot of people have asked me, you know, are there movie theaters in Nicaragua? Absolutely. This is one of the big fancy ones here inside the mall. Uh, so lots of different uh, screenings. You can see, you know, a huge number of movies just like in a mall in the United States. Uh, and of course, you can get pizza right across the hall. Um, you can also, if you're here in Leon or in Chinandega, for example, we have a much smaller movie theater that just has two or four screens. I think it's like four screens. They don't show a ton of movies, but if you're looking for stuff that's coming out, just watch their webpage, and, and most first-run movies are going to be here for at least a little while. Uh, Buffalo Wings, now this the place on the right is actually called Buffalo Wings, but Buffalo Wings as a food, chicken wings in general, is very popular. Now, they're called Elitas when you're um, ordering them just on a menu, uh, but the Buffalo-style wings and things with Buffalo in the name, very, very popular in Nicaragua. They don't realize that it's from the city of Buffalo or anything like that, but uh, look for those. You will be surprised how much you see those in country. So we went out, we got some coffee at uh, that particular cafe, which is in this restaurant area. And now we're gonna walk out of this restaurant area again, see a few more of the shops, and we're gonna head out and show you what the parking lot is like over here. You can see a big ass fan there. That's its actual name. I'm not describing it. That is the company. The big ass fan company makes that giant fan up there. That is a Pane in Vino. Uh, on the left, the big O there in front of us is the uh, well-known um, uh, furniture and home decor store in the mall. We went past the Chiles, it is not Chili's like in the United States, but it looks almost exactly like it and has a very similar vibe and menu. Uh, on the left there is the Florida Canya Experience, which is a really nice store if you're looking for anything Florida Canya related. That is where I bought my Florida Canya hats that you see me wear sometimes, my orange one, my black one. They have really nice uh, coolers and, and you can buy all kinds of Florida Canya drinks there and, and a number of things. Really well-known steakhouse there on the right. Uh, and Sushi Ito, where we ate the night before this on the left. And in front of us is the defunct Hard Rock Cafe. This is the one that went out of business and is no longer around. We're gonna head into the parking lot. You can see what the parking situation is like. And then we're gonna show just a bit of the Doubletree once we're back and uh, kind of calling it a day. This is our day, just food, cafes, shopping, um, walking around Managua. We just enjoy being in the city, getting a little bit different. So thanks for joining me. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It's up there on the screen. Just go to that link. It'll also be in the description below and you can uh, donate to the channel that comes directly to me and helps make all of these trips possible and the cameras and the editing and all the tools that I use. It is very expensive to make this show. So I really appreciate how much everyone comes out and supports it really does it means a lot to me and it makes a really huge difference in making everything that we do possible as always it would be great if you took a moment to like and subscribe to the video uh, post the link to it on social media somewhere uh, tell a friend or family member somebody uh, get them to come and check out the show as well here you can see the parking uh, at the mall we're going to head back to the double tree and just relax in the pool this evening that is going to be our night before just uh, getting some dinner and uh, relaxing this is the view from the double tree Beautiful, beautiful looking towards Santa Domingo, but that is not Santa Domingo. Santa Domingo is past that ridge. Uh, this is from the pool area at the Double Tree. Great views. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. As always, get down in those comments. Let me know what you think about the show. Ask your questions. If you can, check the instructions down below. You can send in a video and be on the show yourself. This is obviously the pool at the Double Tree, and uh, I will see all of you tomorrow.